Hello, hello, hello. Let's try not me. Wait. Let's turn the music down. So today, welcome to the open source stream. I'm Rain Lander, developer advocate with Cockroach Labs. This is my name. My name. That's my name. That's my name. Rain Lander, developer advocate with Cockroach Labs, and this is the open source stream where we explore open source projects, basically play with the getting started guide and see if it works. And if it doesn't, if we run into bugs, we file a, a pull request or an issue depending on the, or, or depending on how it's done, how to collaborate with that um, project. Today is a special show. We are working on a cockroach DB sample app. Um, this has been published for, for about a month, about a month. We're going to do this. I'm just going to be blocking some stuff very gently. Um, we're going to build a leaderboard, um, with front end as well as back end. Cockroach TV is the back end. Uh, we're using Prisma to talk to the database. We're using React and TypeScript for the front end. And um, even though this is published on the 29th of November, I actually found some pretty big bugs in it. So let's see if we find any bugs today. <laughs> and, um, and I'll fix them right away. So yeah, if you'd like to play along, feel free. Uh, let me post this to our chat. We are exploring today. There. That goes to everywhere except LinkedIn. Actually, let me show LinkedIn some love and post that over on the LinkedIn channel, which I just checked and is successfully streaming today on time. Thank you, LinkedIn, for working today. <laughs> Feel free to follow along via bam okay there <gasps> but then it said failed to post the comments why 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 feel free. let's try one more time feel free to follow along linkedin play nice bam okay Shall we get started? Do we like the music? Should I delete it? I think it's okay. It's kind of jamming. Soft. Okay, so you will need to download a few things if you are going to play along at home. Um, this is intro tutorial action. Uh, this is what we're building, this leaderboard. Um, I'm gonna turn Sorry, not sorry. Um, whole thing is in TypeScript. We're going to use the Create React app to do the admin interface, which is pretty cool, as well as the leaderboard. Um, you're going to need the Node.js, uh, the Node.js. You're going to need Node.js installed on your system. I'm using a Mac, so when you see my terminal, um, you can be hidden. Um, so when you see my terminal, it's it's on a Mac. Be that what it may. I will do my best if you are a Windows developer and have specific questions. Feel free to ask them in the chat and we'll see what we can do. Um, you are going to play a little bit with React and you're going to play with JavaScript TypeScript. Um, that said, you don't need to be an expert on any of these in order to follow this blog post. Um, I tried to make it as inclusive as possible. So again, you run into any bugs, you find any bugs today, we'll fix them. Yeah, 
So let's get started. Wait, you know what? Have I actually, uh, have I actually prepped by deleting my old, I've done this project so many times that I might have forgotten to delete the file. <laughs> okay, cool. So I definitely, let's get this party started up in here. Okay, cool. So we can actually start. Okay. Let me know if you have it. When are we going to pretty up your terminal? That is a great question. When are we going to put a, put that time aside? When when we have enough time? Gauntlet thrown. Um, this is just creating the project. It's creating the the cockroachdb typescript folder, and then it's creating um, a create React app inside that folder using the TypeScript template. Um, MPX versus NPM means an install versus using a current version within your system. That's a great question, Adrian. I have no idea. <laughs> this is also when error messages come up. Happy hacking! That's a good sign. Okay, so it's gonna, one of the things I like about this blog post is it specifically gives you directory structures along the way, like, look in there. <laughs> you will see. I, I use the dash L to put them in a row. Um, but yeah, I got my, I got my stuff. By the way, this is already pushed up online on cockroachdb slash cockroachdb dash typescript. Um, you can even see my my original password. That that cluster is long since deleted. Um, yeah. So if you're keen, I'll put this. It'll happen. It will happen, Adrian. Well, probably not till next year. Oh, I should probably put this in a caption. Cockroach db slash cockroach roach db dash type script. There we go. That's a very long link. You know what I wish it would do instead of putting a link that you can't really click is if it had a little um, QR code. You could just stick it here. Just saying. Okay, so we know it created that. Um, pretty much we're gonna do everything from here on out from within that that directory. So if if it doesn't specify where you're supposed to run a command, it's from the base of this direct of this project. Okay. Then you're going to create your serverless database. Just in case you've never done this before, make that a better size. Um, go to cockroachlabs.cloud. Um, if this is the first time you've ever logged in, um, I use login with GitHub. You can also sign up uh, with your own username and password. It just requires a couple more steps of uh, verification. And then we're gonna create a cluster. Um, this is for a serverless. I tend to just pick the defaults on the cloud provider, the regions and the sped limit. Um, by the way, if you go over your spend limit, as in if you use um, more than five gigabytes or 100 RSUs, then it'll just throttle you. It won't start charging you. Um, and you don't have to put in a credit card to get this going. And then I always change this to Sparkling Kitten because that's where I am in life. So, that's my sparkling kitten. 
but it basically just wants you to um, go ahead and download uh, binaries, download CA certificate. These are things that, by the way, by the way, if you have another cluster, you don't need to re-download their certificate. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so you can totally use a uh, local instance. Cockroach DB is available um, as an open source binary to download and whatnot. There's just a couple more steps involved and the cloud instance is just easier. Um, the other option in that was the dedicated and um, I'll, I'll show you again. Wait, just kidding. Get over here. It's trying to open a new browser. I wonder if it'll let me while I have the product. Yeah. So if I were the other option besides the plan, serverless is free forever with uh, 250 million request units, five gig, but the dedicated actually costs quite a bit of money um, from within here. There is, you can go directly to GitHub, CockroachDB, and Cockroach? Yes. And this is the, it's not exactly open source, it's open core. And that means that every three years they release the major, they, they change the license on the major release from a business license, which you cannot use for business purposes, to a open source license. Um, so that's that's why we're not using the that's why we're using serverless as opposed to the local installation. But great question, thank you, Java Dabadu. <laughs> that's a great title. <gasps> You're making magic stuff, aren't you? I totally do need to branch out. Yes. Thank you. All right, but back to our app, sirs. I'm sorry, that's assuming a lot of genders. Okay, so back, focus, focus, Leander. So because I've done this so much, I'm not downloading this binary and I'll tell you why. When you're using GitHub desktop, which is what I use to push my stuff up to my GitHub repo, it doesn't like things over, it has a size limiter of like one meg and this binary is like 1.1 meg or 1.2, it's like just over the limiter. And so it's a huge pain in the butt. And therefore I figured out in troubleshooting this blog post a million times that you don't actually need to download the binary and the ser if you have done it before for other things. Um, so. I'm not going to download it, but in the instructions, it totally is going to go through doing that. So, and this connection, you can also brew install it. Nice. The more you know. We did that. We did that. These are the downloads run the first two sets of commands to download the client and the CA certificate, keep the third command accessible. We'll need it in a moment, along with the password we revealed earlier. Little trick, by the way, if you, <laughs> I know, I'm glad you caught the reference. Um, if you uh, just don't close this page, it'll keep that password cached. Um, I wouldn't recommend that for production, but I also wouldn't recommend serverless for production, but it's great for experimentation, which is what today is. So I'm just going to leave that open. So now we're going to create the database tables and set up Prisma. So you will need to create a directory called database and then a file inside of schema. Uh, a file inside of database called schema.sql and um, I'm using terminal, but you're welcome to do that however you like. Um, and Vim, I tend to use Vim a lot. I also tend to just stay in the root directory and then like edit files all the way out because I have totally messed up and run commands 
uh, yeah, from different place. So I just want you to bring these. This is building out a new database called leaderboard, and then it creates a table, actually two tables within leaderboard, one called players, one's called player scores, and then it inserts some data into those uh, tables. Now, um, it does not insert their scores. So that's something that we have to remember to do at the end, which we will. We will. We will. And then remember that connection string from A4 copy. We just run that string and then dash F and then the path to the file, the schema file we just created. And that should give us this output, which lets you know that it actually followed those instructions. Okay, back to here. That's literally what I just said, that's the output. And then this is what we have to do before we do the NPX Prism, Prisma in it, by the way, Adrian. Adrian loves Prisma and Prisma loves Adrian. <laughs> Is that we need a schema file for Prisma and it needs to be inside a Prisma directory. So again, I spell that right. Yes. So this is just a generic, um, it's telling Prisma we're going to be using the Postgres SQL. Um, uh, and because CockroachDB, um, uh, because CockroachDB uh, uses the Postgres wireframe, it can reference this. Now, one of the things that's coming down the pipeline with Prisma is that they are working on and we're working on with them um, a CockroachDB. Uh, I don't know, will it just say CockroachDB? That'd be awesome. Um, and then we have to set up this file with this information. Um, and now it can be right in our root directory. I do not recommend doing this for production. <laughs> But we're doing this for our play. Uh, my username is always K. So easy ways to do things. And then let me show you an easier way to get. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Adrian. It should technically be in your get ignore. Okay, so going back to this, um, this is your portal. Go to connection parameters. Again, you'll notice I have not navigated away from this connection info because the first time you navigate away, your password uh, disappears and then you have to manually reset it. Uh, but as of right now, it's still there. Oh, and I have Zoe at the end. Nice. So copy. Password. Oops. Host. I delete my colon. I totally did. Colon. Port. Two six. Two six two five seven. And then database. And then you'll notice at the the default of the database in here is to end in the default DB. So one of the things you need to do after you paste it in is delete default DB. And the extra period. Wait, is that the right format? Yes. Colon port. Yes. Okay. And then it goes into details about what I just said. Make sure you replace default DB with leaderboard. Um, 
And then it, it actually goes in, please don't do this. And then here's where we're gonna actually wake it up. Now you can, um, you don't have to use these specific uh, versions of, um, of Prisma, for example, and whatnot. But what we did is we tried to make the blog post a little bit more, uh, so it'll, it won't run into bugs as you use the latest version in the future. Um, and so that's why we have specific, for example, specific Prisma client versions and whatnot in here listed so that when you run it, hopefully it will work for longer. Um, even in the course of developing this blog post out in the application and stuff, things were breaking just because Prisma is, um, is innovating so quickly. Um, totally. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. So Adrian, what do you want to say about Prisma versus SQLize? <laughs> I'm just going to step back from that one. Also, I'm going to do this so you can see the commands a little bit better. Hello. Good to see you. Prisma is the new hotness. It seems so. Prisma is especially since they're specifically working on an integration with us lately. We're pretty happy with Prisma. All right, now knock on wood, this is where my, that introspecting is where it would fail so many times and it just went, it worked, yes! Hey, let's not talk about hats, okay? I fully respect this. You know, you find what works and you stay there. And I love it. This is definitely for people who want to try something new. I get it. <laughs> you use the tool that works for you. Yep. I mean, that's true for so many things. The best diet is the one that works. The best exercise program is the one that works. The best ORM or IDE or anything else is the one that works for you. 100%. Where were we? This got deep. Okay, so it totally introspected, totally worked. Oh, yeah. If you look at the schema Prisma file now, it's got the database in there, which I love. Bam! Um, and now we do MPX Prisma Generate, Adrian. <laughs> All right, have a good meeting. He's been like, why haven't you done the Prisma Generate yet? This whole time. <laughs> Yay, and it works. I'm always happy when things work. All right, now we're going to work with Netlify. So within this, we have three Netlify functions, serverless action, um, and we're going to, well, we'll go into details more about it, but it's basically the getting the scores, um, adding scores, and also getting players. And so one of the first things we need to do is we need to make, well, we need to make sure we have a Netlify account. Um, because we're ultimately going to be deploying using Netlify. But you can do this without having a Netlify account, I think. It's been forever since I signed up for Netlify. And then you're doing this within what Netlify... So Prisma needs the schema file within a Prisma directory. Netlify needs the Netlify functions directory structure in order to know where to look. So if you're not, um, ooh, ooh, ooh. see that's the thing is right now you can't. And this is one of the things that we're working on 
um, is that Prisma and CockroachDB are working on a CockroachDB in, uh, hook so that, yes, you'll be able to use I don't want to. I don't want to guarantee all of the cockroachdb features, but you'll be able to use a lot more than you are now. Um, we definitely ran into some bugs just in creating this blog post, where we were like, <laughs> "It'll be better soon." So, great question. Absolutely. Uh, I already did that. So now I'm making the Netlify. So you need to make the Netlify directory first, and then you can make the functions directory inside. And then again, one of the things I do is, um, is code. Like I, I don't move into the functions directory to then create my files because sometimes I get lost pretty easy um but i i create all the files directly from my base directory because you're doing so many Ooh, adrian's teaching me things you can create both of them uh with a dash p p is in paw nice to know go to chrome chrome Okay, there we go. So we're going to create these three Netlify functions for the leaderboard application. And we're going to start with get scores. Um, and this is what your directory looks like. All right, so first, get scores. Man. And I'm using them because I hate myself, but that's okay. Don't judge. Maybe you're an Emacs. Maybe you're an IDE person. It's all good. We can still be friends. It, like, I got my commands tab. I accidentally included Slack, so it's it keeps being confused. Okay. So, um, effectively, this is going to use the Prisma Scores Find Many. Ooh, check. <laughs> I do enjoy escape rooms. It's true. Um, I think I used Vim before escape rooms, or before I experienced escape rooms, and I think it was a precursor. Like in in the book of my life, they're like this was indicative that um, so it's using a find many um, because this is something this is part of what the types of client Prisma generates for us um, these are the important bits um, in that these two parameters oh you know what I just found, okay, so what happened, I don't know if you noticed, but when I refreshed the screen, the comma that was right after the includes disappeared. And that tells me that it finally loaded the latest version of this blog post, which I'm hoping doesn't have any bugs and is more likely to not have any bugs because you now I'm nervous about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna repaste this in. We're not going to get into the joys of um, of what just happened, but let's just say I've been wrestling with um, Google Docs and Hugo for a while now. Yes. Okay. So that's cool. So basically what it does is instead of um, returning a nested object on, <laughs> that's the second person who said it. We're gonna have to do a sequelize uh, Prisma battle, obviously, this is happening. Um, so to flatten the data so that it's just ID score name, which I love. 
Um, it goes into more detail in the blog post if you would like to check it out and has links over to like JSON Stringify or Big Int and whatnot. All right, so now we're making the add score function. Just singular. On. And then a bit more of explanation. We're getting to the Git players. Which is plural. Trying to mess with our sexy a little bit. It's okay, we can get through this. All right, that's it for Netlify section. Now we're gonna do the front end using React Router. So the reason why I work from the base directory and <laughs> do my files from here is because I ran this command from within Netlify functions. Um, <laughs> Oh no! You're angry today and you even removed the VS code from the PC. Dang! No worries, I hear ya. Breathe! I'm sorry you're so angry today. What happened? What happened? Do you want to talk about it? It's just, it's just between you, me, and the rest of the internet and this will be recorded. Just saying, just saying. I hope you're okay and I hope whatever it is goes away and is resolved in the most helpful way possible. Whatever that means. Okay. Um, yeah, there are a bunch of projects. <laughs> Auto import never works. Never. It never works. It's so true. So, um, I want to point out a couple of things that it just put in. Um, it just put in this directory. Um, and the source directory with that last command. Um, and that is basically the front end. And when it, we've modified the um, public index file just slightly um, so that it, it displays just a little bit more. Uh, prettily, I will say. Nope, don't do that. Mm -mm. I know, I know. It's not very pretty. It's okay. So, we are also replacing the app.tsx file from the GitHub repo. And I should totally add that link right there here on GitHub. It's talking about, wait, this. So it's the source uh, app.tsx. And if you click raw, then you can just do a control A uh, to copy everything. Just kidding, a control A, a command A, max. <laughs> um, to change that. And by the way, so you don't have to delete the original lines of the file. You can just do 
that. And then that. And bam. Uh, let me know if you want a Vim uh, tutorial. I will teach you the five full commands that I know from Vim. Um, okay. So the two, so we replaced the app.tsx, um, but then we're going to add a leaderboard TSX and an admin TSX. And these are the two um, interfaces for the front side of the database. The leaderboard.tsx is the display and admin allows you to add um, new scores. So let's do it. Start with leaderboard.tsx. Ooh, a NeoVim with Lua setup guide. I love, I'm writing this now. Excuse me, please hold. I gotta, gotta write down a thing. Define full. IDE like experience. Okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. All right, all right. With all the bells and whistles, all of them, crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, we are doing this. Okay. All right, all right. Challenge accepted. I say that having not even looked up what Lua is at all, but I, I promise I will explore. Okay. Leaderboard.tsx. Okay. This is just creating the interface. Um, and then within the leaderboard, it's going to use use effect and set leaders. Um, the admin TSX component is nice. Nice. Were you also in Linux or was that under, on the, uh, Mac? Forgot everything. That's how it works. That's how it works with all languages. If you don't use them, they go away. My English, by the way, is so poor because I lived in another country where English was not the first language for so long. You don't use it, you lose it. This one is quite long. I have very much streamed past the blog posts um, quite easily. Admin? Admin just making sure, just making sure. Yes. That would be awesome. Yes, please, Alexander. I would love that. That's awesome. Do it, do it, do it, do it. I'm a bit too happy with the keyboard shortcuts. All right. So then this is where it gets fun. This is where, this is where it often breaks. So hold your breath, sacrifice the chicken. Now is the time. <sighs> Login to Netlify. Oh, you know what? I did not make sure that I deleted um, my old repo. Let me let me delete that. Hey, it's me. Nope, totally there. 
All right, we are, we need to delete this first because everything will fail. Uh, specifically, the the passwords are wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what it looks like to delete a repository. By the way, oh, what is my password? Really, really, please hold. Where's my password? I swear I don't have it written down. Alright, are you gonna show my password? Okay, cool. Ta da! There we go. It's a long password. Okay, so that's deleted. I'm going to push this repository up to my personal repository using GitHub Desktop. There are many ways to do this, including command line. Um, you could just copy and paste your file. That would be a bit of a pain because it's kind of a big project. Um, but I found GitHub Desktop is, is nice. Yeah. Yeah, like, so it's some, it, it mostly works as passwordless and you can just put in your fingerprint, but every like once a month, it's like, give me your original password. And I'm like, eh, okay, I'll look it up. I'm not even sure I can make this much bigger, um, but it is currently pointed to uh, the repository that I just created because I've been creating that same repository in the same location over and over again. So it already knows that, but um, you would you would basically uh, go to the repository that you wanted to initialize locally. Um, and then this is my initial, initial push, commit to master, Publish a repository. Um, if I was putting it into a repo into an organization, I would select the organization. But I'm putting this into my personal um, repository, so it's not an org. Um, and yeah, TypeScript, uh, React, Prisma. What else are we using on here? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Sample app, something like that. I know, I know. I'm totally using them, and then I use uh, interface uh, GUI for it. For that, forget. I know. I'm such an enigma. It's not fair. Oh, I totally made that private on accident. Okay. So yes. Wait. Is Boop. Yes. And I need to change this to public. Wait. I'm like moving too fast for it. Okay, slowly scrolling down to the private. Come on, you can do it. Change visibility. Make public. I know I should do everything command line or I should do everything GUI. I realize this. No, I'm just showing my, um, I'm just showing where I learned stuff. Okay, so add a new site, import an existing project from GitHub. This all, by the way, is in the blog post. Um, Cockroach to be. Dash TypeScript. You can tell that I've been working on this blog post a lot lately. Oh, I thought it would have done 
Instead of doing master as default, it should have done main as default. Maybe that's in the GitHub GUI or the desktop GUI. That's okay. So here's one of the things that is super important. Uh, and by super important, I mean, this is where my bug usually creeps in and I haven't figured out how to troubleshoot it not online yet, um, is that if you do the next step before it finishes deploying, it sometimes breaks. It consistently has broken my system. So I'm just going to sit here and maybe we'll, I'm just going to turn the music up and we're going to have a dance party until it finishes deploying. We're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. We're just waiting. Of course, it's done. Of course, it's done. So, here's, by the way, things to look for in Netlify. Oh, I could have put Netlify. Um, that, this little square gives you a preview of your site. So right now, if I were to click on it, it would be broken. Ta-da! <laughs> and part of the reason it's broken is because we haven't, uh, defined that environment variable, um, within Netlify. So build and deploy, environment, edit variables. And this is going to be the same as this. So literally the database URL is going to be the left side. And the value is going to be this whole long string. Then save. Now, once you've done this, it doesn't automatically grab that environment. So you need to re-trigger the deployment, which is up here, deploys, trigger, deploy. Now, this is where my bug comes up and adding that doesn't work. And so we'll see if it actually works or not. And I'm not nervous at all. Not nervous at all. <laughs> I'm not going to cry online. It's just fine. Just, just fine. This is fine. Okay, site is live. Let's go back to it. <laughs> Excuse me. And you can tell it worked because it actually has a preview. I'm gonna cry. No! Oh, it sort of worked. It was a tease. It did not work. Okay, so sometimes you need to go in and add the admin page, which I don't even know. Yeah. Okay, so it's still broken. Go me. So I have some work to do on the blog still, because if I follow the um, Google Doc, all this works. Um, I'm not upset, <laughs> but I'm upset. I'm upset. If I'm honest, I'm upset. Um, so our admin, wait, actually, maybe it needs the, this. No, 
No, it's just pissed. <sighs> so, I'll tell you what. I'm going to call it a day. And I'm going to go fix this blog post. And by, it's 4 o'clock right now, Eastern Time. By 5 o'clock Eastern Time, this will work. And I will publish the changes. I know. Well, you missed everything, obviously. I broke the site. And it doesn't work. Um, and I have to fix it. Again. But it will be fixed. And I will make this happen by hook or by crook because we want all the bells and whistles. But yeah, uh, yes, the environments are on Netlify. Great question. Um, from within site settings, um, if you go to build and deploy, you know what? I tell you what, Fox Joe, uh, this is the environment variable. Um, from here. So yes, great question. Um, but if anyone, like actually I'll leave it open if anyone else would like to troubleshoot, um, I'm here for it. Like I would love to know why my Google doc version works and my published Hugo doc does not work. It's probably a comma somewhere or a uh, dash dash being turned into that weird big thick dash that yeah yeah well you gotta get in there haven't you <laughs> yeah didn't even update the search I think if it's been months you had you like was it since the serverless launch because we've had an entire minor release since then. But yeah. All right, I'm flipping the table. I'm going to recreate it. Um, Block Joe's going to recreate it as well. Recreate the certs, probably. Probably not the blog post. That blog post is live. If you figure something out in the next... Uh, hour in less than the next hour at me on Twitter. I'm at rain Leander. Um, yeah. How frustrating. I'm not mad. Okay. I'm mad. Um, but I'm going to fix it. I think, I hope, I hope we're going to get this working. Damn it. Not that, that. All right, and this also goes into details that I had. So like, push your repository up, um, new site from Git, um, add the database variable environment. Uh, this is how you add it. Add the connection string that we set up via Prisma schema. And then new. Yeah, and then re-trigger the deployment. You know what, though? There's one more thing we could do. Um, I could tell it to delete cache on the redeploy. Because um, right now we're just doing deploy site, but maybe we should clear cache and deploy site. I don't think so, but it's worth trying. I don't have a lot of hope, y'all, though. I feel that I would really like some chocolate right now. <laughs> Just saying.
Yeah. Oh, the um, the search doesn't find the blog post, or the search doesn't find this particular bug. Ah, good. We're going to fix this. All right. You know, before, it only said the title and the slug are different. Yeah. Um, thank you. See, this is throwing me off. It normally, when it has this as the preview, that means that it works. I've never had it do this where it blanked out. Um, one of the other things I do is inspect the elements to see if I have an error somewhere. Ooh, it doesn't like the leaderboard TSX. Um, oh, and it doesn't like the get scores. Do you see that? Failed to load the resource. The server responded with a 502 on the function get scores. Okay, so we've got two things. Let's see if we can fix this. Let me just turn this down. We are going to hack on things. We're going to hack until we're back. All right. Yeah, I don't know either. Okay. So it doesn't like get scores. I'm going to go over to the OG Google Doc. I'm putting there's just a little detail in this thing. Good scores. I got you. I could have sworn that I literally updated get scores just today. That's cool. Oh, I don't want to do that. That's what I want to do. Okay. And then it also doesn't like my leaderboard. So again, I'm going to copy directly from the OG. I'm, I'm betting there's a page break messing up between Hugo and Google Docs. And that sucks. Did I misspell it? No. Wait, what did it just do? Yeah, I thought so. Don't do that. There we go. Okay. That's it. It's referencing the leaderboard TSX. It's referencing the get scores. Uh, that is all I see as a problem. He's even screaming at me down here. Good to know. Okay. Oh! That's a great question. It's called Netlify. And they're both there. I need syntax highlighting. C. Agreed. 100%. Nope. It's a great suggestion. I love it. it. There's way too many mistakes that could happen from like manually copying and pasting over. I agree with that. 
Okay. I should just be able to... Wait, why isn't it... Why isn't it recognizing that I changed files locally? There were a ton of local changes that were different. Why? Why do? Okay, this is why GitHub and I don't get along. <laughs> You had a ton. You want me to do this manually? It is not. It is not. Oh, it's saying that the files that I changed were exactly the same as the ones online. That's what it's saying. So even though I edited them, I know, I know, GitHub did it by default. I know. Yes, sir. Okay. Nope, not over there. Let's do this online. By the way, if you mess up, and where's my local? There it is. Settings. I feel like it's somewhere in here. There we go. Wait. No, they're just instructions. Where are the instructions? Where are the instructions? Um, so here's a great question. So Bokja is like, why does it run locally? And one of the uh, reasons this is a little bit difficult is that you have to deploy to Netlify first before it runs locally because of the Netlify functions. Now it might work. Um, I think it's just Netlify dev, which I have in here. Yeah, Netlify dev. Okay, so it might, let's see if it runs locally. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, we know it's running fine on locally. I'm just gonna add the scores really quick. Um, so you can see what the finished product looks like. lowercase so this is what it looks like um locally we updated our cockroach db database so technically now this preview would also um if it was showing so it's it's something between netlify and well it's something on the platform because it works locally. No, please hold while I rename my branch. Because I've done this before, I swear. Seriously? Yes. Um, yeah, the dot env is supposed to be, yes. And we did this, yes. 
So it's right here. Wait, let me close things down. So within Netlify, because it ignores the dot env, even though it went over and used the GitHub, the dot env is ignored. That's why you have to update your environment and edit the variables here. So this is my connect script um, pasted from the dot env. Um, So yeah, that's where it works up. And I, I'm i frustrated because I've been looking at this Google Doc and the Hugo published blog post um, for a while. There are no messages within Netlify, um, but if you look at the... Um, if you inspect it, hello, inspect it. Um, yeah, I'm still pissed at the get scores and the leaderboard, which I have no, I have no explanation. Um, it does make sense that the get scores. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it also works if you do a control click. Usually. There it goes. See? It's a problem with a function. It's a problem with the get scores function, sort of. Um, although when we copied and pasted from the working log to um, here, Go to Netlify. Go to functions. Oh, yes. This will Netlify functions. Click on that function. Get scores. Adrian's saying this very quickly. Change from latest to something else. Last hour. Ooh. Here's. Please run Prisma, Prisma Generate. So does it want me to run Prisma Generate? Like, I would think that would run automatically. And try to import it again. So do I run Prisma? Oh. I do not have a Netlify Tomal. Alright, fine. This is that. Go to your package.json. Whoa. It's the version of Prisma. Hello, love. Here I come to save the day. Okay. Adrian is on the way. Oh my gosh, that works Here really I well. Go. What is all this? Oh. Adrian is on the way. Oh you God. need headphones too. What is all this? Wow. 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 That was a lot. That was a lot. Way to make an entrance, though, right? What an entrance. Can I hear you now, though? Say hello.
I don't trust it. Oh, you're still. OK, that was weird. I, I muted and it was okay. still like echoing. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, that was weird. Yes, but I can also hear. Still like echoing. Yeah. That. Can you hear me? Okay, that was weird. Yes, but I can also hear. Still like echoing. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, but I can also hear. Magic. Oh, and it's even looping. Do you have me playing in another tab? Oh, and it's even looping. Do you have me playing in another? Yeah. Haha, ha, that's what it is. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I didn't I didn't close your stream. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway, Hi. Hi. Um, so what we can do is if you see it, it's probably using it is the <laughs> matrix. Um, <laughs> it's probably using this build script uh, by by default. You, I, I was in a different meeting, so I don't I didn't watch you set up that part. Uh, so right. it's probably running uh, NPM run build. So what we can do is at the beginning of that uh, that script. So right before React scripts build, got it. Uh, we're going to add uh, Prisma generate space ampersand ampersand space. And while we're in here, I'm see if I can find it. Okay, and then we're going to have to add a dev dependency as well. Do you want it to? So in the build uh, so script, at the end of this. So right at, at the beginning. Nope. We're not adding a line. We're gonna we're gonna update the build. Oh, okay. So at, at the beginning of it. So type uh, Prisma mm -hmm. space generate. And then ampersand, space, ampersand. ampersand, ampersand, ampersand. Yeah, but you need to have some spaces in there. Yeah. And so what that's going to do is whenever uh, Netlify runs build, it's going to first generate, generate from Prisma. And then it's going to run the React scripts build. Uh, okay. So the other thing we need to do, so go ahead and save and exit out of this. And we're going to do npm install dash capital D space Prisma. And so what we're doing is we're installing Prisma as a dev dependency. So that way the CLI has nice. access to that command. Nice. This is totally the matrix. So this is what I this is one of the things I brought up in, in the document. And they're like, oh no, you don't need it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm, you I do. still do it, but um, okay. And so now you should be able to push these changes up and then Netlify yeah. will rebuild and hopefully yeah. um, that function will work now. Why yeah. why does it think it changed 116 files? The, is it trying to upload is it trying to push the dot uh, the node modules? Where where is your uh, dot get ignore? Oh, it's not that's that's it. <laughs> There is none. So aha. Uh -huh. So what mm -hmm. you did earlier was you pushed up all your dot your your node modules uh, files to GitHub, mm -hmm. which is not recommended. Um, mm -mm. We can fix that. But oh, you probably also pushed up your dot m file unless you didn't check that in. Nope. Nope. Everything was checked in. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. We can cool. we can fix that. Um, yeah. We'll, we can just add a dot get ignore and. Uh, and then we can use git remove, I believe, to remove it from, uh, yeah. from being tracked. But this should be enough that it will uh, it'll at least get the application working. So at this point, I then, uh, just to verify. So if you, yeah, if you hit the little back on functions, you can, you can get to the deploy and see yeah. it deploying. But that. I swear it used to be as easy as changing something on this page to change it from master to main. Oh, um, you know what? If you look, at, if you like Google GitHub master to main, like GitHub has a. a I thing. know, but look at all this crap. 
<laughs> or that. like well github has like a specific document for telling you how to, to fix it because you might also need to put a setting in your uh in your git config like that's on your local machine so it knows but i thought yeah. that with the newer versions of git they like just defaulted it to main like Yes, exactly. Like I'm completely confused why it showed up as master. I don't know. Like I think that's the GitHub desktop that did that cuz Oh. See, I, I don't mean, use GitHub des desktop. Um yeah. It wasn't I'm an option sure. when I started using Git. Yeah, I know. I know there I also know. also GitHub wasn't an option when I started using Git. <laughs> I used a website called Unfuddle. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, do we need to Poke it to redeploy it. Um, well, wait, uh, at four, they say okay. today at 420. Um, yeah. hey, oh. So that's oh my God, forward. too many files. Okay, so that looks like your your latest commit. That is the thing. Um, but it doesn't say published. Hit refresh. Sometimes I, I find that like, that doesn't <laughs> switch. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Great. Cool. 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 Uh, cool okay. Cool, cool. So it does say published. So now you can just refresh your other page or click on that link or however you like to do it. Great. <laughs> Booyah. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Okay. So what did we, we do? We did exactly? it. We did it. We. I see, but I don't know. Okay. So yay. First of all. Sure. But I don't know what we did differently from what I have in the original because I did not do the NPM install um, Prisma. So this is the, the part. Capability. If you actually look at the Prisma documents, um, yeah. ooh, as a, as a pre-build step, that could also work. Uh, what, yeah. the, the solution that we're using is the solution that's in the Prisma documents. And so mm -hmm. whenever you're like, I want to I want to deploy Prisma to Netlify, mm -hmm. this is kind mm -hmm. of the steps that it tells you. Um, you might actually be able to do it as a pre-build step. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just instead of being the ampersand ampersand, then it's a different uh, script name. Mm -hmm. Then it would have run up ahead. But also you needed to install Prisma as a dev dependency for that to be able to work. Um, so yeah. what we're finding out is that Prisma Generate doesn't run by default. Or by default. I wonder if if you had the if you had Prisma as a dev dependency, if it would have just automatically tried to do it, right? So if you didn't need to put it as part of the build command, but it would like maybe try to do it during deploy. And I was like, ah, there is no Prisma command. So we're just going to skip it. And we do run Prisma generate. It's just, it, and it's before. So you run it locally. And what it does yeah. is it updates, yeah. it updates files inside locally. of your node modules. Yeah. And the deploy does not use your node modules. It does its yep. own NPM yep. install. Yep. Yep. Uh, Prisma generate. What it does is it generates all of the, the type bindings um, mm -hmm. for the client. Migration is pushing the model or, or syncing up the model with the database. OK, so after we deploy, we also need to, or after we deploy to Netlify, you can then run Netlify dev and it runs locally. But in order for it to run upstream, you need to change that line on the file, um, which I'll put in the blog post. And then you also need to install uh, NPM, blah, 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 yeah. locally. Wait, do you need to do that locally or because? Do, do you need to do what? Sorry, great question. Uh, can't you read my mind? Um, the, the, the dev dependency it needs to be there for the the build process. The okay. way that we the way that we handle it locally is we can use npx, so we can say okay. npx Prisma generate npx Prisma db pool. Um, yeah. Hi, bud. Hi, Atticus, Puppers. Um, so really, all that we needed to do for Netlify is change the build script. Yeah. So it's because you don't have a 
netlify.toml, it's probably using the the default ones or at some point you created an app for Netlify. I think you did that with the, the I CLI. I hundred percent. And so you put in the build command there. And so it knew to just like run NPM run build, like that's its build command. Yeah. Uh, and so what we did is we augmented that command by telling it the to, to first run the, the Prisma generate. Okay. Well, that's cool. That is not in the uh, Google Doc. So I you'll probably see somehow a comment that I made about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Noted. Okay. Well, okay. this has been an open source stream. And special thanks to Atticus and to Adrian and to Buff Joe and hey buddy. Hey buddy. Oh, he wants I know to he can't hear you sock. because I have the headphones on. I know. Throw the sock, damn it. Um, and I want to say Alexander was on here too earlier, and we had some anonymous LinkedIn people. Love you, but I can't see you on LinkedIn. Unless you specifically give those permissions. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a good session. I hope you enjoyed it. And I have a challenge to do a full NeoVim with Luau setup with all the bells and whistles. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. No guarantee. But, you know, maybe it's a Christmas present. I, I'm, I'm going to continue to use VS Code. Um, <laughs> how I roll. That's I can fair. use Vim in a pinch if I need to, but reach their own. Yeah. All right. Shall we dance it out, Adrian? You got any music for us? I got music. Thank All you, right. Bacho. Thanks for joining us yeah. today. As usual, we will not as usual at all. Uh, we will not be here for the next <laughs> two weeks. I think it is. Um, I will be here tomorrow. Christmas. Adrian will be here tomorrow. I always do this. Adrian will be here tomorrow, probably working on Dusty Domains, right? Yep. Now that music is super loud. <laughs> Thursday. We, uh, we, we totally do. Merry yeah. Christmas. Happy New Year. And we'll see you soon, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>